Okay, Ephesians chapter number 6, if you will. We're going to uh, continue our studying. Uh, as the handout indicates, uh, what about our relationships? We're now in to the family. Uh, we've spent the last several uh, weeks dealing with husbands and wives, and uh, really this has come out of questions that you guys have brought and asked, uh, you know, hey, how do we do some things, and what's some scriptural answers and so forth. And uh, so we were talking about relationships, and then I thought, well, why not let's just go ahead and talk about husbands, wives, and children, and fathers, and, you know, do what Paul talks about doing here, because he's our apostle, and he gives us the instructions, so here we are. Now, we're leaving marriage. We're leaving the husbands and wives out of chapter number 5. Look at chapter 5, verse 33 with me. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. The two greatest things, the two needs in marriage. The wives need to be loved, and the husbands need to be reverenced, the honor, the respect. Now, how does that verse end? It ends with, what's the punctuation there? A period. Marriage is mom and da- husband and wife. Marriage is not the children, because the children are next. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And, and he's going to begin to talk here to, uh, about the children. And in verse four, f- uh, verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. So he's going to talk to the dads. Then in verse number 5, he's going to talk to the servants. And then in, in verse 9, to the masters. So we're leaving the family, or we're leaving marriage. We're going to move into the family unit. And then Paul will then move out into the workplace, if you will. Now, we've already talked about how to deal with work. So we're not going to go talk about work again. We're just going to deal with today, children. Next week will be the fathers, and then we'll, because we've already discussed our relationship with the boss that just won't get off our neck, (laughs) okay? So we've already dealt with that, so we're not going to repeat all of that, but what I want you to see here about children, if you hold on to here and see the comparative passage, which is Colossians 3 and verse number 20. Now, in our Sunday school hour, we're in this passage, and we talked about the children uh, really this morning, but we're going to do it again here. And as I look around the room, we're, we are all children. We, somebody bear, bore you, born you, birthed you, okay? <laughs> You're, we're all somebody's child, okay? So really, we're, uh, we're kind of talking to everybody, and there's a few kids here and uh, so forth. So we'll, we'll speak to you guys, but, with, but I'm also want to talk to the parents and to the dads specifically next week but today to the parents because when you talk about children by the way colossians 3:20 children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the lord when we talk about children children are a blessing from god i know right now as they're in their terrible twos or in their nasty eights or in their unbearable 13s that they're not don't seem to be a blessing from God, but they are. Come back with me to Genesis chapter number 1. And, and they're a blessing for God because they have, there's a design behind them. Genesis chapter number 1. Th- there's a design here behind having children and, and so forth that God set up right off the bat. If you look at verse number 28, now if you should have a handout. If you do, you'll see where everywhere I'm going, okay? Eventually we'll get there. We might skip it and go somewhere else, but we'll get there. And if you're on the internet, you know to go to the website and you can download it from there. Genesis 1:28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and what? Well, how do they multiply? How does Adam and Eve multiply? Well, they gotta have kids, don't they? How are they going to replenish the earth? How are they gonna go and, and fill up the earth? Well, they have to have kids, chapter 4. By the way, in chapter 3, the curse placed upon Eve was that there's going to be sorrow and in thy conception, uh, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth what? Who? Children. 
chapter 4, verse 1, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare, God, bare Cain. And notice what she said. I have gotten a man from Adam. No, from who? From the Lord. See, she was excited to have a child. And Cain, now Cain turned out to be a rascal, killed Abel. But who, I have a, I have a man, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Now she wasn't talking about Adam, she's talking about Cain. Verse 25, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, for God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, who Cain, who, who Cain slew. See how excited she was about having children. And children become very... Come over to Psalms, chapter 125. Children are, are wonderful uh, people, things, <laughs> is what I was going to say. But they're not things, they're people. And, and children are a blessing from the Lord. Eve's, man, I got a man from the Lord. I got, I got something wonderful here. Chap, Psalms 127, verse number 3. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of thy womb is his reward. And arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Children. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. They're a joy, aren't they? Boy, have a quiver full. Now, don't go out and have 19 kids, all right? You know, obviously there's some economics that have to play into the picture here. Okay, and that's that the point here is, hey, boy, children, they're a heritage of the Lord. It's a good thing to have kids. It really is. Come over to Proverbs chapter 23. Sometimes, you know, we were just asking about grandparents. We're going to talk about you in just in a minute here as we go down through this. But children... You know, we have had folks over the years, ladies who can't have children. You're not missing anything. Children, if you're able to have children, they're a heritage. They're a wonderful thing. But I can't, you know, phys I think about Sarah, Abraham and Sarah. The Lord says, you're going to have a boy. And, she, oh, her, and the verse says her womb was dead. You know, there's a, there's a lady who has a promise of God to have a child, and she can't. Well, she does because of God's miraculous working. But I understand that, well, you can go be a mom to somebody's children. So you can have an influence on children. We're going to get to that in just a minute here. But so don't just think, well, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm missing out something. Really, you're not. You have the opportunity to be something to someone else that you can't be. Proverbs 23, verse 24. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice and that and he that beget, begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him the father of the righteous I'm, I'm sorry thy father and thy mother shall be glad and she that bear thee shall rejoice you see there's a joy in having a child now having a ch having children and talk to you as I, again, not many children, some here. But having children is very critical in, 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 in humanity because it was designed to, for the, the mechanism of replenishing and occupying and multiplying, but it's where you produce the next generation of godly people is by having children. Oftentimes I hear, I've, I understand the conversation, why would you want to bring a kid into this world? Well, maybe here's why. Because it's an opportunity to produce a godly generation, a, a generation to carry on the grace of God. Because even though he could come in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, he's also delayed that for over 2,000 years. And what if he delays it another 2,000 years? It's his delay. It's his deal. So you know what happens? You have to, you, you, you got to think about this. Again, we look around the room. We don't have really a big nursery. Our only baby, they moved away. And I, and I go, okay, 
Who's coming up? Who's bringing up the rear? And I see the young people, and I see the, the okay, now we got to train them and get them going, and boom, 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 boom. Why? Because they're the future. They're, I'm, I'm an old man. I'm going to be gone one day. Boy, I got nothing out of that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know. So, oh, no, you weren't supposed to argue. So what happens is, is as you come along here and dealing with children, it's, the, it's, where, it's where you carry on the next generation. And it's where you produce the next. And, and I'll be honest with you parents. We'll talk about you guys here in a minute. I told you that. I'm, I'm warning you. <laughs> You're right in the bullseye. But your grandparents and the, and the, and the older generation, you, you have an influence on the children above and beyond more really than mom and dad ever will because you've been there done that got the t-shirt the scars and the hurt my dad always told me the best person to get advice on raising your children is their grandparents you know who that is don't you your mom and dad you know why because they've raised you and they see the pitfalls and they've, they've seen the mistakes and they can come in and help fill in those pitfalls and those mistakes but you know here every it says here he says here in proverbs 23 what kind of a child he's a wise child isn't he chapter 24 of proverbs verse 24 well that's not the verse <laughs> that one won't verse 15 of 23 there it is sorry 23 15 so that's a typo there for you my son, if thy heart be, what, wise, my heart shall rejoice, even my... You know, children are very special, aren't they? They, they? they can be wise children, or if you come back to chapter 17 of Proverbs, what can they be? They can be foolish, can't they? Chapter 17, and verse number 21, He that begatteth a fool doth it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. Verse 25, a foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. You see, children can, can grow up and to be fools, or they can grow up and be wise. So you know what? That place is a great responsibility then, doesn't it? On parents but also on the child. Come back now to Ephesians 6. Because when he says here in Ephesians 6, talk to, you, talk to the kids for a minute here. Ephesians 6 and verse number 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That's, what, that's the commandment of God to children. It is to obey their parents, where? In the Lord, for this is right. It, that's, that's it, guys, kids. Your job is to obey your parents in, in all things. It's not to argue with them. It's not to say, yeah, but. It's not to say, well, my friends are doing. It's not to say, well, on Facebook we got this, or on Twitter we're doing this. No, it is to obey your parents. It's that simple. So parents, you need to do what with your children? You need to communicate to them what God says. He says to obey. Not to be foolish, not to go to... He says obey. So as parents, we need to communicate that issue to our children. Is that they need to obey. Verse 2, he says honor. Verse 3, that it may be well with him, that may as live long on the earth. Hey, there, there's, some, there's some things here that we communicate to our children to where they're going to obey, and it's going to benefit them out the remainder of their life. And we need to communicate to them the issue of sound doctrine. So that when the children obey your parents, when they begin to obey and they begin to learn to obey, to be under the authority of the parents, to do what you're told to do. Wow. 
They see it in mom and dad, by the way. They see it there. They see it in mom and dad as they live out as wives and husbands that we've been looking at in the last two weeks. They begin to see it there. They know what it is to obey God's Word because mom and dad, you're already obeying the Word of God. As a wife submits to her husband, lives in that submissive spirit under the Lord and her husband and is chosen by faith to function and to operate as the wife, the husband has come along and has by faith chosen to love his wife even as Christ loved and gave himself for the church, that total sacrifice and that living for one another and the child sees that You know what happens? They begin to understand what it is to obey the Word of God. Then they will obey mom and dad. Follow that? Okay, now children, come with me to Luke chapter 2. In Scripture, there are no teenagers. In Scripture, there are no toddlers. Okay? In Scripture, there are children and then there are adults. Luke 2, if you will, we see the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number 40, And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Talking about Jesus. Verse 41, Now his parents went to to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was, what? Twelve years old. So how old is Jesus here? He's twelve. He's not two, he's not three, he's what? Twelve. Now drop down to verse number 51. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. He is 12 years old, and you know who he's subject to? To Joseph and Mary. At 12. And he, but his mother kept all these sayings in his heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. See, folks, in Scripture, you go back in the Old Testament, back there in Deuteronomy, and Moses comes in and says, everybody under the age of 19 is going to die, is going to live. Everybody over 19 is going to live. And you know what he calls those 19 and unders? Children. The children of this generation. See, there's no age. I mean, in Israel, that's the age of accountability. We have no age of accountability in in the dispensation of grace. There's an issue here. So my point is, is when we talk about children, we're not just talking about the little guys. We're talking about teenagers. We're talking about all the way up until the time appointed of the father to say you're an adult. There's still a child. Back in Ephesians 6, verse 1 here, obey, to be under the authority of the parents, to do what you're told, guys. Now, who are, who are the children to obey? The parents. Now, this is interesting. It doesn't say dad. It says the parents. Mom and dad. The responsibility is on the parents to run the children. To rule over the children and their lives. The next verse we'll deal with next week. Fathers and ye fathers. Verse 4. It's their father's responsibility to lead. To come along and to set up the disciplinary actions. And what, is, what, what, what the family is going to function and look like. And mom comes along and stands with him and, and, and follows his lead. But they do it together. It's a unity. It's a unified front. And the reason it says it this way is because, parents, we are fighting for, and we are under, we are, we're in the battle for our children's souls. If you look at our society today, think about this. When did TV, when was the TV invented? Early 40s, late 40s, right after the war. TV comes in, right? When I grew up, I didn't have a TV in my home until I was 14 years old, 15 years old. So for 15 years of my life, I never saw TV. 
And the only reason we had TV in my, at 15 was because Grace School of the Bible started and we had to watch the videos to make sure they were looking okay. And then it was a little one. And Brother Leach said, no, you can't have a little one, you've got to get a big one. So we got a big one. <laughs> okay? What comes in? TV comes in, doesn't it? And Barney becomes the babysitter. And the wiggles and the woggles and all this stuff. And you know what they begin to do? They begin to teach your children things that you should be teaching them. The internet, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace. You know, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube joined. New name, you Twitter face. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> bubba boom, all right? Folks, our, the world system around us, its design is to get your kids, parents. It's to come in and it's to take them and to control them. And our battle, and that's why it's parents, and that's why it's a unified front, it's to come in and it's to fight, it's to rescue them from sin. They should hear from day one that they're a sinner and that Christ died for their sins. They should from day one understand that why there's problems and why they struggle with things is because of sin. And the answer is at Calvary. They should be instructed in that from day one. Because who's a right around the corner? The course of the world. And who's the course of the world? You know what the course of the world says why there's problems? Because your mom did fill in the blank. They blame mom. You know, it's interesting why they always go back to the parents, isn't it, in, in, the, in the discussion of things. It's interesting. I, I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Because whose job is it to lay that foundation in? It's mom and dad. It's interesting. Grandparents, you're on the hook too, by the way. Maybe you're... Kids, you never had this instruction when your children were with you. Maybe you did. Maybe things didn't work out the way you thought. Maybe whatever. You know, it's never too late. I've said this before when we were talking about the wives and the husbands. If you ain't doing this stuff, stop what you're doing and let's get on track. It's never too late to have an influence on your children or your grandchildren. And to have a positive one of, hey, look, yeah, that's a problem, but this is the issue. It's sin, and Christ died for it, and there's the answer. And let's fix this, and let's get back up, and let's get uh, going, and, let, and so forth. Okay, that's it right there. Now, the, the, the right thing to do here is for children to obey their parents. Now, the issue of obeying here, by the way, Colossians 3.20 says to obey them in... And how many things? All things. Because what has the parents done? The parents, they've come in and they're beginning to teach them to obey in all things. If you look at verse 4, And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in nurture and admonition. You see that issue of bring them up? That's interesting, mom and dad. You are to be bringing them with you. You know what that means? You're going somewhere, aren't you? You are to bring them with you when you come to church. If I can say it that way and you understand what I'm talking about. You, if you're going somewhere, what do you do? You bring them with you. But it's the nurture and admonition of the Lord, right? And I'm not trying to preach next week's message, but we're talking to the parents with the kids. This is what we're dealing with here. Folks, as parents or future parents... They need to know and see what it is to have Christ living in life. And they're going to see that in you. When you as a wife obey the verses as your wife, and you as a husband obey the verses there, they begin to see that. So then when they look at, uh, if you look back at the wives, look at verse 22. Wives submit yourselves unto your five twenty two as uh, wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. The end of verse twenty four. So let the wives be to their own husbands in what, in everything. How is a child going to obey mom and dad in everything if mom isn't obeying the verses in everything either? 
They won't. They'll simply say, my mom didn't do it. I don't have to do it either. But if they see mom being the wife to her husband in everything, then when they come over, mom and dad come over here and teach the kids, what are the kids going to say? Mom and dad doing what they're supposed to be doing, obeying the word of God. Follow that? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That's easy, guys. It really is. The word of God is simple. The grace of God, the simplicity that's in Christ, First, uh, second, first Corinthians, second Corinthians 11 says. We make it complicated. Sin makes it complicated. Things going on in our lives that we come along and do, and, well, we can do this or we can do that. It complicates. And he says, no, 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 don't be complicated. Simply obey the word of God. Now come back into Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, because I, I want to talk a little bit here about the, the, what, what, he say, what he says here. So as parents, we want to teach them to obey in all things. We want to lay some, some doctrinal, some sound doctrine in their lives. We want to come along and we want to we wanna help them grow and help them learn. And in verse 2, he says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That issue of honor is a very interesting issue. Because honor, love, respect, reverence, cherish, is something that they're not going to do this right now. Right now, as they're growing, as they're learning, as you're training them, as you're doing verse 4, nurture and admonition, you're feeding them, and they're growing, they're obeying you. But honor is something that comes along later down the road. Come back with me to Proverbs real quick, but stop on in Jeremiah 35 on your way. Okay? Jeremiah 35. There's an interesting thing here about honor. Jeremiah 35, and get, go back to Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Here's in Jeremiah 35. Proverbs 22, 6. Here's the idea about the honor. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it so here you are you train them up you you instill the sound doctrine in your marriage you've put on display what it is to have the christ life live the grace life living you're training them you're preparing them you're working with them you're spending time by the way notice it says train up a child in the way he will go most times we say the way we want them to go it doesn't say that. It says the way he will go. You know what that means, guys? Dads, moms, you spend time with your kids. You, 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 and by the way, that takes time and energy and effort. And you learn and you, you come to understand who they are, their uniqueness. The twins. They are twins by birth. Other than that, they're totally opposite in their personality. One's driven, one isn't. One does this, the other one does that. One goes here, one does this. One, other, they're completely individual. I know my kids. I know when they're ready to be pronounced to their adulthood, they're not there yet, even though they're 18. They think they are, but they're not. The mature, you know them, you train them. Have, have you ever seen guys training for a marathon? When do they start training for a marathon? Two weeks before the race? No, they've been training way back, haven't they? They lose the weight. They get in trip. They're, boom, they're running. they got the shoes. They wear them out. They're da, 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 da. They're, it's not something that just happens, okay, they're 18. Let's get them ready for adulthood. No, this starts way back in the cradle. The honor. Look at Jeremiah 35. You have the, 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 the story here of the the Rechabites. The Rechabites were, uh, are, are Gentiles. Verse 1, he says, The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of 
Josiah king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. And they do, they go. Jeremiah goes down, brings them in, they have the great party. They under, the, verse 5. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups, and I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Re- uh, uh, Rechabah, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons. For how long? What did Dad teach them? Don't drink the wine. The Rechabites, they were polite. They understood what it was for a Jew to call them to a party, being Gentiles. They understood what it was for Jeremiah to cross the street and to invite them in for a party. They were not being rude here. They said, "Our dad, no thank you. Our dad has taught us not to do this. Verse 7, neither shall ye build house nor so. Look at what he tells them. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyards, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we, and now here's the issue and the honor. Thus have we what? Obeyed the voice of Jonadab, our father. And all that he hath charged us to drink no wine all our days. We are wives, our, uh, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters you know what they did they stood there these are grown men leaders of the nation and when jeremiah had laid this in front of them you know what they said we are going to obey the word of our parents and they said don't do this and we're not going to violate that that is honoring your father and mother the honor comes not in the moment where they obey you you know, sometimes we say, if you obey, then you... It's not there. The honor comes later when the word has been instilled in it, and they make that word their own. Now, if I can say it that way, when they take the word of God and they make it their own, and they say, you know what? We're going to go to church because we want to learn. We're not going to church because mommy and daddy drug us there. Okay. We're going to go and learn. We make it our own. Come back to Proverbs 17. This honor. And for children, again, instruct them, train them, teach them, bring them up. Proverbs 17. Understand what, what's going on with them. Love them. Whip them. <laughs> Discipline them. There's only one, pe- and by the way, when you say whip them, there's only one part of the anatomy that was, ever, that was created to be touched, and you're sitting on it, okay? It's not talking about beating them. It's not talking about leaving bruises and marks and all that. It's talking about love them, discipline them. Children need discipline. And you love them. Proverbs 17, verse number 6. Children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children are their fathers there's the grandkids children's children they're what they're the crown of old men when i was growing up i used to hear my dad talk about raising kids and i thought nah he don't know what he's talking about now that i got three i know what he's talking about so now when I hear him talk about having grandkids and what a blessing and wonderful thing it is, I'm like, well, oh, maybe the old man's got something because <laughs> he was pretty close on the kid. So I won't kill him. I'll let him live. Okay? You know, children's children. They're the crown of old men. But notice, and the glory of the children are the fathers. You see, folks, co- come over to 2 Timothy 2. When you're talking about children, 2 Timothy 2.2 2, We use this as a ministry issue, but this is also a children issue, and a mom and dad issue, and a parent issue, and an honor issue. 
And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who are able to teach others also. You bring that into the family. Parents, you're faithful. You're, you're listening. You're learning. You're growing. And you turn around and you communicate that to others, your children. And then what do they do? They come around and they make the word of God their own and the life of Christ begins to live in them. And they learn what you've learned about Galatians 2.20 and Colossians 2.10 and Ephesians 1.3. They learn that, and they say, that's what I want, not because I've been browbeat with it, but because it's who I am in Christ. And then that's where they begin to honor your father and your mother. In 6.2. And it's interesting, we talk about that honor, and I know the verse says, thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, and you go back into, Ephesians, into Exodus, and it's in the Ten Commandments. And there's a reason why it's there, by the way. By the way, do you know what? Uh, get off track. Romans 1. You guys didn't have anywhere to go today anyway. <clears throat> Romans 1. In Romans 1, you see the dregs of society. And you see where all the heathen and how the heathen begin to think. Here in Romans 1, you start in verse 20 and, and verse 19 and you go down through it and so forth. But notice verse 20, verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mal malignant, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. What's the end of that verse? Disobedient to who? You know what the mark of a heathen is? Being disobedient to mom and dad. Ooh. Now that's the heathen. Come over to 2 Timothy 3. I think it is. 2 Timothy 3. What about the, 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 uh, the religious crowd? Grace believers, you guys, us people. We know that there's some perilous times coming, verse 1 tells us, right? But look at verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to who? Folks, children, parents, fathers. Disobedience to parents is the mark of trouble. And how do you fix it? You love them. You chapter 6 back in Ephesians, and you say, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition. You love them, and you're there for them. Now back in chapter 6, we'll, again, we're talking about dad, fathers next week. But this all goes hand in hand. You can't, I, I struggled in how to separate it, because <laughs> the verses separate them but not without dealing with the parents. Because the greatest struggle as a dad, as a parent, is that their children, they don't know anything, do they? So what do you have to do? You have to put structure around them, don't you? You have to put guidelines around them. You've got to put some rules on them. But then yet you want them to learn about God's grace and, and so forth. And, and it's like, okay, well, how do I do that and how do I do this? And boy, is that ever the struggle. But knowing your kids is the help and the answer in that struggle. Because what one kid can take, another one can't. I, I, I kid you not. Raising boys is different than raising girls. boy knock them on the back of the head send them out there boom it's done it's over they've forgotten it they've moved on girls uh-uh you wore my pants today to school did not did too <laughs> three months later do you remember when you wore my pants to school <laughs> dad rolls in what are you doing wham bam blah, blah. Mommy, 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 daddy, daddy. Mom looks at you. Wife comes. You can't do that. Right? If you got girls, you know what I'm talking. 
different. Boys, what do you do? Smack them beside the back of the head, send them out there. Brothers get in the fights. They duke it out. It's all over. The Ten minutes later, they're their best friends. You understand that? You want to know the answer in the struggle? We'll talk a little bit more about it next week. It's knowing your kids, parents. Knowing how to deal with them, how, how and who they are and where they're at. And their uniqueness... And in their uniqueness, they begin to learn to put on display Christ's life in that uniqueness. You'll notice verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That's the promise, <clears throat> is that it'll be well and you'll live long. Living long, that's learning from mom and dad's mistakes, is what that is. As you get older, mom and dad don't know nothing, I know everything, right? 19, 18, 19, 20, you, you got the world by the, sh by the hair, you're good to go. And what happens? The world reaches up and says, oh no, you don't. And, what ha and you make a mistake. And you go back to mom and dad. Now, mom and dad, you got a choice. You can say, see, I told you so. Or you can put your arm around them and hug them and love them and help them and then whisper, I told you so. But make the loving and the hugging the issue and not the I told you so. Train them, teach them. Even at 19, 20, 21, 22. Because, man, when you get 30, you're it. And, boy, when you get 40, you've got it all. And at 50, you go, I ain't getting nothing but bills. You see, it never ends. Live long. Learn from mom and dad's mistakes. Don't make the same ones. And if you do, mom and dad, you've been there. Grandparents, you've been there. Come up and hug them and love them. In Colossians 3, verse 20, it, the verse says there, Children, obey your parents. And this is well-pleasing for the Lord. That's the quality of our obedience, is that it's well-pleasing. If you come back over with me to Romans 15. Romans 15. Here's the deal. <clears throat> that they'll live long... And they'll be well. Romans 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Where? In believing. That ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The God of hope fill you with all what? Joy and peace. Boy, it's a struggle when life is, in, is, is rough and tough. And there's no joy and peace. But where do I get the joy and peace? in believing the children need to know that they need to be taught that that verse back in Proverbs 22 we don't have to go back there to it train you prepare them parents we're to instill in our children the sound doctrine that will cause our children to grow into the next generation of godly people we're to know them. It's our responsibility to know them. To know them in such a way that we understand, we grasp who they are. That's that train in the way he should go. That takes time and energy and effort and attention. And sometimes, you know, we, we miss that as mom and dads because we got bills to pay, we got jobs to do. There's not more, there's a, if you got more than one kid, you got all this. And, and life distracts, doesn't it? So you know who is there to help? Your parents, their grandparents. Because sometimes grandparents can come along and be the babysitter and be okay with it. And they can smooth things out and, and help where mom and dad are so focused, gotta, 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 gotta do, gotta do. Because we're not of the world, but we still live in the world, don't we? And sometimes maybe grandma and grandpa aren't around. My grandparents are gone. 
half of my children's grandparents are gone. The other half live three days away by car, three and a half hours by plane. Train will probably take two weeks, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So then who needs to fill in there? Local assembly. Grandparents here, moms and dads here, other, other people. You see, it's a family. That's why it's our responsibility, our relationships in the family as children. Next week will be as fathers. You see, folks, it's our responsibility to t- prepare the children for the contest of life, to get them in shape. They're the key in producing the next godly generation. And they're worth every penny we can spend on them and to do for them. My kids go to local high school in Mesa, and in that school, my children are told that we are the richest people. Of the, we're the rich, they're the rich kids. I go, really? <laughs> They don't see the bank account. (laughs) But you know why my guys are considered to be the rich kids? Because we spend money on them. And we take care of them. Money sometimes we don't have, which is not a good way to do business, by the way. But But it's investing in the future. That's important. You ought to think about that. Train up your child. Know them. Help them see Christ in them. Help them see what it is and why it is what we do. And we'll talk about that some next time with nurture and admonition. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, the right thing to do is obey your mom and dad in all things. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Don't argue. Don't complain. Don't pitch a fit. I know it's part of your nature. We got that. Moms and dads, it's your job, though, to know them, to come along and help train them, which, by the way, that would mean that you need to explain, maybe, why you're doing what you're doing. You understand that. Maybe you need to explain why we do this or that. No, you can't do this. What do they usually say? Why not? Maybe you ought to take two minutes and explain why not, other than, I told you so. You understand that. Sometimes backing off of that, my way or the highway, and say, hey, this is why. Because if you do A, B will happen, and then C could happen, and show them your mistake, and let them learn from it. Follow that? It's important. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Colossians 3, verse 20, we'll close there. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. I know we all want to be well-pleasing to the Lord. Kids and parents, I got it. So how do we do that? We simply obey the Word of God. It's that simple. Okay? All right. Kids, you got your orders? Parents, you got yours. We'll talk to dads next week because fathers, there's a real reason why we're singled out of the parent equation. And it's because of our headship, our role, our leadership, our responsibility. But it's also because we have something to do way beyond just being dad. Okay? And it's important. All right? All right. Dearly Father, we thank you for the morning, Lord. We thank you for the instructions here so that we know how to have a family life that's operating according and is well-pleasing to you so that in the end we can give you the praise and the honor and the glory and and whatsoever we do in word or deed, we do it heartily to you and that folks and people can see our families and our family life being honoring and bringing glory to you. In your name we pray.